How are you? I'm well. How are you? Good. Good. We got a full full house of volunteers here today. We got two more arriving this morning. Good. Excellent. We got a full full house of volunteers here today. That's great. Om agana timiranda shangana gana saraga chaksurun miritam yana tashmai sri gurave namaha sri chaitanya mano bhishtam shtapitam yana bhutare sayam rupa karamayam darati svaparantikam bandeham sri guru siyata parakamanam sri gurun vaishnavam sya sri rupam sagadatam sahagana raganatam vitam stam sadevam Sadvaitam sabadutam paritana saitam krishna chaitanya devam sri radha krishna padan sahagana Larita Shivishakan Vitam Sham. He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandu Jigapate Gopisha Gopika Kantara the Kantunamos to Tim. Jayatam Sarito Mangdir Mandir Matir Matir Matsavashaparam Boja Radana Madanamam. Siman Rasarasaram Vibam Sivara Karsan Vena Sharapaga Gopanata Sriasaram. Divyad Vindaranika Padumara Shri Madhavadma Gara Shima Shanisto Sri Sri Radha Shida Govindara Prashtadabhi He Savan Mano Manami. Namo Brahmanya Devaya Go Brahmanya Taya Jajigadi Taya Krishnaya Govindara Mangalang Bhagavan Vishnu, Mangaram Gavirajaja, Mangaram Padani Kaksha, Mangarayatano Hudi, O Narayanaya Vidmihi, Vasade Vayadi Mihi, Tano Vishnu Pichodi at the Hem, O Mahadevi Chavidmihi, Vishnu Pandichi Dimihi, Tano Lakshmi Pichodi at the Hem, Maharakshmi Namastivium, Namastivium Seresari Hari, Pray Namastivium, Namastivium Nirai Rem. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutare Srimadi Bhakti Vedanta Shami Tinamani Staya Sarasati Deva Gurvani Pacharine Nevishesa Sanyori Paskata Desatari Ne Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasari Go Bhakta Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Good morning Jean, good morning Rob, welcome to Wisdom Wednesday, I believe we're setting a new record today by revisiting the same verse for the 14th time. <clears throat> I'm sure we've never revisited a verse 14 times before. We're really delving into this concept of Krishna as a dramatic actor. Here's the verse which has inspired us over the course of almost a month now. Maya Javani Kanchanam. Being beyond the range of limited sense perception, you, Krishna, are the eternally irreproachable factor covered by the curtain of the deluding energy. You're invisible to the foolish observer, exactly as an actor addressed as a player is not recognized. Prabhupada says people generally do not appreciate someone unless they do something wonderful, something extraordinary. <clears throat> and yet here's Krishna playing the role of an ordinary boy in a rural village, nothing special about it, just uh, dusty country lanes, scraggly trees here and there, peacocks living in the trees, um, camels and donkeys and um, hogs in the open uh, gutters, um, cows to be milked and calves to be taken out and escorted for grazing and butter to be churned and cooking over a, a, a fire inside of adobe huts seems quite everything about it is ordinary and that's the way krishna likes it if you think about it the movies that you might have seen in your lifetime the movies that involve a lot of action like mission mission impossible with superstars like Tom Cruise, not much acting involved. It's really all about stunt work and effects and razzle-dazzle. There really isn't much acting involved by these action heroes. The movies where the really superb acting comes out are the movies where there's not a lot of action, just the opposite. The action is the acting the suspense, not the bells and the whistles and the Hollywood special effect and the explosions and the car case chases and the helicopters and shooting 20 bad guys. That's not acting. I don't know what it is, but it's not acting. But the, the, the really best acting is done when things are ordinary. 
the ordinary dramas of a routine life. You know, Richard Burton, John Barrymore, um, all the great actors were not action heroes. And so Krishna prefers the ordinary because it enables him to focus on the individual personal relationships and all the shades of pleasure, all the different tastes. Again, same idea, food, fast food. It's nothing subtle about it. It's, it's gross. Um, it's for the, it's common denominator type food with sugars and processed items in it and so on and so forth. If you want to eat well and, and experience an abundance, a bouquet of taste, you have to eat food that has been prepared with care, with loving, scruple and attention to detail in which all kinds of different spices and flavors are contained. Um, the, the food which is mass produced it doesn't have any of those shades, any of those subtleties. The word that comes to us from Sanskrit, which you cannot really translate into English, is rasa. Rasa conveys taste. Another meaning of rasa is mellows. Everything about the word conveys subtlety, sublimity, things taste beyond the ordinary. If you want to know acting, real acting, it's not about action. It's not about movement. It's not about velocity. It's not about violence. Just the opposite. It's about the routine, the subtle, the sublime. If you want to taste really good food, it's not about food which you get at the fast food window while your car is idling. It's about food which is grown with care and attention without chemicals. It's harvested, cut up, cooked fresh with all kinds of delightful spices and attention to detail. The, literally the consciousness, literally the consciousness of the cook goes into the preparation. He's thinking through each and every step, planning it and very carefully crafting that preparation with an idea to how it will explode on your palate. Similarly, an actor, a truly great actor, is not mindlessly going about his lines while jumping from an airplane or putting a karate punch into the bad guy. He's, he's absorbed in the particular character that he's playing. And in all the different, if you, if you see a really good actor, everything's in the face. You know, somebody says something to him, and there's an expression that it's just a second. It's less than a second. It just splits across his face. But you know that he's conveyed an impression. And there's been a response in him to what's been said. A very subtle, very quick. Uh, you could easily miss it. But in, in those little nuances is all the skill of the dramatic actor. Now, Krishna lives as an ordinary boy, apparently as the son of Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj, in a rural, simple, ordinary village in Vrindavan, doing rural, simple, ordinary things like taking the cows out every day, having picnic lunches with his friends, swimming in the river, um, whatever ordinary boys do. But the whole interest, the whole thrill, the enchantment is in the way that Krishna deals with his devotees. No whistles, no bells. And so sometimes, um, people can easily miss the supernatural nature of Krishna's appearance and activities. And do, in doing so, they miss the opportunity themselves to get off the wheel of birth, death, disease, and old age. If you understand how Krishna loves the quote-unquote ordinary, then janma karma medivam evam yovidya chakva deham buddhar punariti mamiti arjuna. Simply by understanding beneath the surface of Krishna's activities and pastimes is enough that when you leave the present body, you'll not again have to take another material body. There's nothing more powerful than that understanding of the transcendental nature of Krishna's birth and activities. There's nothing that will give you a better result 
than simply understanding under the proper guidance how it is that though Krishna loves the ordinary, he is not ordinary. He loves the ordinary because he has an extraordinary connection with his devotees and the joy of it, the bliss of it, the sublimity of it lies not in the gross, not in violence, not in dramatic action, um, but in the subtlety of it, in the sublimity of it, in the spirit by nature is, is so sublime, so subtle that with these gross material senses, we can't even perceive it. Similarly, if you're on the gross level of sense gratification, you'll never catch the meaning, the actual deep transcendental subtle spiritual meaning behind Krishna's appearing as a cowherd boy in Vrindavan and behind his relationships with the devotees. Because Krishna is not interested in the Krishna incarnation in performing supernatural feats. The exception is that when there is a threat to his devotees, he gives himself entirely to his devotees. And so normally he doesn't like to blow his cover. <clears throat> he likes to keep hidden. He likes to keep himself under the curtain of the yoga maya illusion. The yoga maya illusion is the spell that he puts on his liberated devotees in the spiritual world whereby they don't realize that he's God. There is none of the majesty, the awe of Krishna towards Krishna by his devotees in the spiritual world because that sense of majesty and awe would intimidate them. It would cause them to back off from their service. They're thinking that Krishna is dependent upon them. Rather than that Krishna is protecting them, their mood is, I need to protect Krishna. Rather than that Krishna is providing them all of their food and all their maintenance, they're thinking, I need to provide food for Krishna. I need to put, provide a root for Krishna. Rather than thinking that Krishna is providing the cotton and the flax and everything by which we make our clothes, they're thinking, I need to make a new set of clothes for Krishna. That's the whole point of it, that they're not um, looking for Krishna to serve them, but they want to serve Krishna, either in neutrality or in servitorship or in friendship or parenthood or in the relationship of a conjugal lover. And so that whole infrastructure is dependent upon Krishna being dependent upon his devotees. But because he's so fixed and so dependent on his devotees, whenever there's a threat to the devotees, Krishna cannot control himself. He blows his cover. He reveals himself in a supernatural way to the, be the supreme personality of Godhead. Um, it's not very often that it happens, but the reason that it happens is totally consistent with the personality, the persona of Krishna. Aham bhakta paradini heshadanti nishadabhari shikaru dashtu dashtu ridyan. When Dervasa was being chased by the Sudarsana chakra throughout the entire universe, fearing for his life, he came to Lord Vishnu to ask Lord Vishnu to cause the Sudarsana chakra to back off. Now that was reasonable. The Sudarsana chakra was launched by Vishnu. Sudarsana chakra is controlled by Vishnu. And the Sudarsana chakra certainly would back off were Vishnu to ask it to do so. But Vishnu said, I have no power to, to cause the Sudarsana chakra to back down. You have to go to my devotee in order to see that happen. He invests all of the power in his devotees. And those devotees who are fixed up intimately with, the, with him in love and devotion, they don't have any awareness of Krishna's God. When you think about it, <clears throat> I've always just interrupted me with a note here, totally unrelated to the class, but it gives a little ding and comes onto your screen. When you think about it, the, con the very concept of God is not for anybody who has an intimate connection with God. The concept of God as a powerful controller is only for those who have not yet uncovered their eternal relationship with God. The concept of God is specifically for those who are on the bodily concept of life, who have a ways to go in order to get in the middle of what God created them to be, in the middle of the mission which God assigned and empowered them to do. They're not there yet. And so for them, the concept of God as the all-powerful living being 
is applicable. Take, for example, the policeman. If you're, if you're okay with the laws, you follow the laws, you don't have any trouble, you see the purpose behind laws, laws are established for the well-being of society in general. If we all follow the laws, we get a greater measure of freedom, we can accomplish more of our dreams, and it is only those people who are dishonest, who are outlaws, who are crooks and criminals, who make life hard for the rest of us. That's why we have prison houses and things like that. But if you're a law-abiding citizen, the police are just not for you. Police have no negative connotations for a law-abiding citizen. In fact, when a law-abiding citizen or a, an innocent child who hasn't grown up yet sees a policeman, there's a very, very positive, friendly feeling. That policeman, in spite of his uniform, his badge, his gun, his truncheon, poses no threat for a law-abiding citizen. The law-abiding citizen, when they see the policeman, and even though the policeman is carrying weapons of enforcement, because the law-abiding citizen knows that those weapons of enforcement are not for me, they're for the criminals. He still, in spite of what might be an intimidating demeanor of the policeman, he feels like the policeman is his friend doesn't feel like the policeman is there to control him or punish him or regulate him in any other any way because he's already regulated himself. So it's not inconsistent that the inhabitants of Vrindavan, itam satam brahma shukya bhucham dasyam gataram paradeya viram maya sitam narakanam sakam vijarhu krita punya punjam. Those boys who play with Krishna, those devotees who take the role of Krishna's parents or conjugal lovers or cowherd boyfriends or in the neutral position of grass or trees or cloud or water. Itam satam brahma sukhanu bhutya. They have performed pious activities. They have accumulated mountains of pious activities for innumerable previous verse. They can't even remember. There isn't even a historical record of the last time they committed a, a sinful activity. So the idea of God as the controller, as the enforcer, just doesn't apply to them. It has no meaning and no practical application to them. They are so far over being intimidated by God or having an idea of God as an enforcer or punishment that they wrestle with him and he allows that in the spiritual world. And if Krishna's team in a particular competitive endeavor should lose. The conditions are that the losers will carry the winners on their shoulders. And so Krishna, in order to enjoy the intimacy of association with his devotees, sometimes his team loses the contest. And the result of it is that Krishna, as the loser, has to carry one of the winners on his shoulder. Saka sudha kare sake kana tumi kanbara tumi amihana. And that devotee who, who has left behind any conception of God as a controller, you leave behind the conception of God as a controller when you leave behind sinful activities, when you leave behind the bodily conception of life. You also leave behind in the dust as a distant forgotten memory any concept of God as the controller. If you're an honest, pious, law-abiding citizen, the police are your friend. They're not exercising any power or control over you. They're not infringing upon your freedom or your privacy at all. You have maximum amount of freedom, maximum amount of privacy, because you, along with all the other law-abiding citizens, work together cooperatively in order to create harmony and peace in human society. It's only the criminals that have the idea of the police as being against their interests. It's only the criminals who have the idea of the police as being a powerful, repressive force. The, the, for the criminal, the police do restrict their freedom. The police do not restrict the freedom of the honest citizens, but yes, when the criminal sees the policeman, he sees him as an impediment, as a stumbling block 
towards the fulfillment of his desires. And his desires are all illicit. They're all illicit. When the criminal sees the policeman, what comes to mind are all of the crimes that he committed. And the thought inevitably arises that maybe the policeman is coming now for me. Maybe they've detected and identified me as this burglar or this armed robber or this mugger. And now they're coming to beat me over the head and drag me away to the prison. So when the criminal sees the uh, policeman, there's a, there's a surge of fear, surge of apprehension. His heart goes thump, thump, and he tenses up and he's ready uh, at a moment's notice to run and try to evade apprehension. But the opposite emotions are felt by the honest citizen. When the honest citizen sees a policeman, he feels friendly, he feels warm. He feels like this man is not here to restrict my freedom, he's here to enable my freedom. So in, in the same way, there's no concept of God as an enforcer, as a punisher, as a scorekeeper amongst those who've awakened their eternal spiritual relationship with Krishna. Nitya Siddha, Krishna Prema, Sadhu Kadanai, Shravanada Sudhiti, Kari Simply by chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We automatically remove the cloud covering of illusion. We step back from our misidentification with this material body, mind, family, country, society, species, and we begin to step into our real identity as a friend, as a servant, as a parent, as a conjugal lover of Krishna. And consequently, all fear, all anxiety recedes. Happiness automatically emerges. Happiness is the nature of the soul. Krishna made us happy. It's only when we forget Krishna that we become stressed and full of anxiety. Bhakti, parashnabhava, virakta, nanyata, chaisha, trisha, triekaha. <clears throat> it says in the same way, yatash, natash, nu, pushti, tushti. What happens? You might be hungry. You might be weak. You might be dizzy. You might be full of anxiety. You know, you're, you, you, you're thinking, I'm going to die if I don't get something to eat. But you sit down. There's a nice meal of prasadam. And each bite that you take, your anxiety diminishes. Your stress diminishes. Your weakness diminishes. Your insecurity diminishes. And progressively, bite after bite after bite, all those negative things, bite after bite, diminish step by step, and they are replaced by satisfaction, by strength, by security, by happiness. Similarly, as one advances in devotional service, as one advances in knowledge and purity under the training of a bona fide spiritual master, by associating with purified devotees, by purifying one's existence and eating consecrated prasadam, vegetarian food, which is offered to the Lord, one becomes step by step by step more free of anxiety, aggravation, stress, and insecurity, and proportionally full of joy, peace, pleasure, happiness, meaningfulness, and purposefulness. All of that is achieved when one gives food to the soul. We have certain food for the body, and the analogy, the bodily analogy is expresses the, the mandate, the need for the soul to get its own nutrition. We have to feed the soul along with the body. In fact, it's a more of a priority to feed the soul than it is the body. And so the food for the soul is loving devotional service to the Lord. The Lord Brahma, after he had stolen the cows and the coward boys and he saw Krishna standing there like an ordinary boy with a morsel of food in his hand, acting, playing the role of a young boy who has lost his friends. A minute ago, they were there, and now they're gone. And he's playing the role to perfection. This is what Brahma wanted to see what Krishna would do. He wanted to provoke Krishna, just like a child wants to provoke their parent to see how the parent will react. The child 
provokes the parent in order to get the attention of the parent. So Brahma stole the cows and stole the coward boys to see what Krishna would do. And Krishna knew that. Krishna knew that was the innermost desire of Brahma's heart. So Krishna acted the role. And he's not jumping off of large buildings or swinging underneath a helicopter, shooting 50 bad guys. He's just standing there doing nothing. Prabhupada says, generally we don't appreciate somebody unless they're doing something wonderful. But here Krishna is doing nothing. Nothing. He's not, he's, not a, he's not like a superhero. He's not looking like he's 18 or 20 in the prime of life and the prime of youth ready to do supernatural tasks. He's just a little boy. Um, he's lost his friends. He's lost his cows. He's standing as if bewildered. What happened? Where did they go? What in the world? He's distracted. He's got this, he, he had a food, he had a little morsel of food in his hand that he was gonna eat. And he's gotten so distracted that the, the food is melting, making his hand, you know, they say M&Ms melt in your mouth, not in your hand. So these, these were melting in his hand. He was doing nothing. And yet Lord Brahma became stunned. An ordinary man, he can, he can have a stunt man. He can have a double. There can be all kinds of tricks. I remember when I was traveling through Europe as a 23-year-old, I traveled with uh, Clement Woods. Clement Woods had written a screenplay for a movie that was being filmed in Czechoslovakia called My Michael Kohas. Apparently Michael Kohas was a freedom fighter um, in the middle ages. And uh, he fought against the repressive powers there. And so they were filming some fight scenes. We were on, on set for a couple of days. We were traveling between Paris and Spetsis where they had a, another home uh, in Greece. Um, so they were filming this fight scene. And eventually, later on, a few months later, I saw the fight scene. And it was full of action, um, people being shot, falling off the back of their horses. The horses themselves were falling down in the ground. It was ghastly, to tell the truth. But the filming of it was terminally boring. Sat there for two days, watching them film these so-called action scenes. And there was nothing to it. It was... It was the actor himself didn't do any of the dangerous parts. And even the quote unquote dangerous parts were so carefully organized and prepared and choreographed that they were, they were totally boring. Couldn't wait to get out of there after two days time. <laughs> and so uh, Krishna is just standing there with a morsel of food in his hand, pretending, acting, as if he was bewildered. And Lord Brahma knows this is the supreme personality of God. Vedashu Dudabam Adhurama. This is, you can't understand Krishna by studying the Vedas, by doing yoga, by doing austerities and sacrifices and penances. The only way these practices are going to be helpful to you as a spirit soul is if they're undertaken for the satisfaction of Krishna. Mat Pritish Paramamara. These disciplines, these areas in which you can rise to a level of excellence, they should be undertaken for the satisfaction of Krishna. They should be undertaken with the result that Krishna stand stunned with a morsel of food in his hand doing nothing, doing nothing. Brahma got goosebumps all over his body. His hackle, the, the hackles on the back of all four of his heads stood up on end when he saw Krishna not doing anything, simply standing like an actor, stunned with a morsel of food in his hand. So Lord Brahma knew that Krishna would be capable of destroying millions of universes with a clip of his finger. So the fact that Krishna didn't do anything, he simply took Lord Brahma's provocation as an opportunity to act like an ordinary boy, that was more stunning, more amazing, more jaw-dropping to Lord Brahma 
than that if Krishna had been baited by the provocation and reacted in a supernatural way. This is sweetness. This is intimacy. And we need to, we need to enter into these pastimes with the right guidance. If we do this, Janma Karma Medivam Evam Yogi Chakram Deo Pranar Janma Neti Mamiti Man. These pastimes, these, these instances in which Krishna reacted by acting and not acting. These instances where Krishna did action, inaction, and inaction, inaction. If we, if we understand these pastimes of the Lord under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master to whom these inner truths have been revealed, the result is so powerful that we will not, upon leaving this present material body, ever again assume another material body. We will not again take birth in this material world. And that's why it says, Vedashu Durlabam Adalabam Atbabakto. Lord Brahma said, this Krishna standing like an ordinary person cannot be understood by studying the Vedas or doing tapasya or giving away in charity or doing yoga. He can only be understood in the association of pure devotees. He is the best actor. Nobody covers themselves better than Krishna. You cannot uncover Krishna. You cannot know Krishna. You cannot measure Krishna through the puny, insufficient means of studying the scriptures, doing yoga, giving in charity, um, learning verses, attending church. These means are totally inadequate because Krishna is the best actor. Nobody covers themselves better than Krishna. On the stage, you get uh, an Academy Award-winning actor who's got the best costumes. He's got the best supporting crew and cast. He's got the best props. He's got the best backgrounds. He's got the best sound system. He's got a Shakespearean level role. So you cannot understand who that person is who is playing that role. The better he is at playing that role, the more distance there is between him and his audience. So no one is a better actor than Krishna. And, no, and because he's the best actor, far beyond all the Academy Award winners, there's only one way that you can understand him. And that's through the prescription that he himself establishes. Tad bini prani pratenam, pari pashnenam teva, upadek shanti te gyanam, gyaninas tapadarshanam. It is only through the association and teaching of pure devotees and you can understand that this same boy standing apparently stunned at the vacancy of his friends and coward boys with a, a morsel of food melting in his hand is in fact the lord of all lords ishwara parama krishna satya that that body is full of bliss knowledge and eternity that he has no controller over him that he controls everything but he himself is controlled by the love of his pure devotees. And those devotees put aside any sense of majesty. The supernatural powers and action of Krishna is actually antithetical to the sweet, sublime, subtle mood of loving reciprocation between the Lord and his devotees. Krishna rarely in Vrindavan reveals his supernatural nature and performs, you know, mission impossible type activities. And when he does them, he does them as surreptitiously as possible. We talked about how after Mother Yashoda finally succeeded in binding Krishna to the mortar so that she could resume her household deities, unseen by Mother Yashoda and by the adult inhabitants of Vrindavan, Krishna crawled, dragging that very heavy mortar with him between the two Yamal Arjun trees that were in the courtyard. And he, and he instead of being stuck like an ordinary boy, he continued to crawl and then that mortar caused those two trees to crash down with a great noise and a great uh, tumult, and the ground shook and everything. None of the adult members of Vrindavan saw that happening. Krishna did it surreptitiously. It's only the little boys about Krishna's age who were here and there happened to see Krishna. And so when the adults appeared on the scene, so, um, so, um, 
removed were they from any sense of Krishna as being the supreme personality of God, and that they began to thank Vishnu. They began to offer prayers of thanks to Narayan that these two trees fell down. Never mind why they fell. There's no lightning, there's no storm, there's no thunderbolts. And why, okay, as unlike. It's unlikely that one tree would just fall spontaneously on a clear, windless, uh, uh, uncloudy day, but two trees fall down at the same time in the same place with, with no inclement weather conditions. That, that didn't occur to them. All they noted was that the trees fell down, but Krishna was saved. Krishna was crawling nearby, and they thanked Narayan. Please, thank you, Narayan, that you saved Krishna, that these trees didn't fall and crush Krishna. And the little babies came up and said, I don't think there was really any danger that Krishna is going to be crushed because he's the one that pulled the trees down. And out of those trees, these two effulgent golden personalities came out and they offered a basin to Krishna. And then they ascended to the heavenly planets. As soon as they heard this description of Krishna's supernatural position from the little boys, what happened? The adults dismissed it. They thought the boys were fibbing. The boys were making up tales. They didn't want to entertain the thought of Krishna being supernaturally able to protect them. They wanted to retain the sense that they were protecting Krishna. They were feeding Krishna. They were clothing Krishna. Krishna was their boy, their cousin, their friend. Krishna was a Gokulite, not the Lord of all thousands of worlds, but that Krishna was born, bred, and raised in Gokula, Krishna is a simple cowherd boy, son of Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda. That's where the sweetness is. That's where the depth, that's where the richness is. That's where the fullness is, not only for ourselves as individual spirit souls, part and parcel of Krishna, but that's what makes Krishna himself, the supreme personality of Godhead, tick. Krishna lives for his devotees. Krishna lives to um, enjoy beautiful, intimate, rich, sweet, eternal, unending, ever-increasing pastimes with his devotees, either in neutrality, either in servitorship, either in friendship, either in parentalhood, or in conjugal love. So as the devotee lives for Krishna, as Krishna lives in the heart of the devotee, the devotee lives in the heart of Krishna. This is the sum and substance. This is the heart of God and is only revealed by those who are pure devotees of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thanks very much for joining us. Okay, let me, um, Jai Keshava. Okay, please, everybody congratulate Jay. You see him in the comment section, Jay D. Arashtya. He's now initiated devotee with the name of Jai Keshava. Is that correct, Jay? And tell us again who your spiritual master was also, if you have a chance in the comment section. So let's congratulate. Initiation means that your real spiritual journey has begun. You've acknowledged in an official public way that the 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 Mahatsevam Dwaravimo, the door to intimacy with Krishna is the pure devotees in the line of his succession. You acknowledge that, you surrender to that, and you link yourself up with that descending chain of civic succession. That's why it's called initiation. That's when you're real devotional service begins. And so congratulations to Jai Keshava. Das. He hasn't put anything in the reply, but he gave us a thumbs up anyway. Gene, thanks very much. Gene was our only guy on Facebook when we started this broadcast, but he's been joined by Govinda Dev, by Manasaganga, by Pavana Gopini, by, by Bobby Christine, by Rakesh Raghava. Rakesh, I didn't even know about your accident. Um, I just heard last night during the Tuesday night conference call from Sundari Pri and Govinda Day. I, I've been praying for your quick recovery. And of course, we're all thankful that even though there was a huge potential for injury and loss, 
um, Krishna protected you with minimal injuries. Could have been so much more worse. Thank God for that. So good morning, Rukesh. Thanks very much for joining us. Sukshma was in Connecticut yesterday. I don't know where she is today. She's probably in another state altogether. Madhavadas, Hare Krishna. Happy Wisdom Wednesday. Pragna, thanks for joining Hare Krishna. If you have any music for the Garba, we want to do an hour of Garba, uh, October 22nd, Saturday, for our Diwali Govardhan Puja celebration. And after the fireworks, we want to do an hour of Garba. Vanita Sharma has the Dandiyas, which you kindly gave her. I'm not sure whether she's got the music, but if we need any music, we'd be much obliged if you can send her an MP3 for the Garba music. Ramananda Roy, thank you very much for joining us. Kara, give Krishna an Oscar. Yeah. Um, give him a million Oscars. <laughs> the best actors don't need a lot of action. The best actors, you just all you, you you just look at their face and hear them deliver their lines. It is more interesting, more in, enlivening, more absorbing, more stimulating than people getting shot and jumping out of off of mountains and climbing onto helicopters. I think that's I'm, I can't wait to hear what Rob's takeaway is this morning. Okay, Romapada Swami. Okay, yeah, the reason that uh, Jai Keshava couldn't comment was he's driving down the freeway 75 miles an hour trying to get to work. So you're forgiven, but he did. I hope, I hope you didn't risk your life by typing this message. But yes, Romapada Swami was his initiating spiritual master, Bhakti Gary. So thanks for being such a lively and faithful crew on this Wisdom Wednesday. Let's uh, finish up here with uh, the takeaways from Robster. Do you have something today? Hare Krishna Prabhuji and congratulations to Jay. I do have some today. Uh, so just a simple one, Krishna, the Supreme Actor. Uh -huh. um, and uh, Krishna perfectly plays his part to free the fallen entangled heart. Oh wow! Okay, can you? I, I don't. I don't have time to write that down. Can you send that to me? Yes, probably. You. And can can you repeat it once more for all of us? Yes, Krishna perfectly plays his part to free the fallen entangled heart. That's 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 it for today. Unless you've got something that can even trump that. Uh, I don't know, but I could try. <laughs> <laughs> God is here to guide and steer and give a spiritual kick in the rear. <laughs> <laughs> and uh chant and profusion and remove illusion <laughs> those were all good i like the second one though second one really puts your finger right on the pulse of today's talk so please send me all of those i'll include them in the facebook so um yeah that that was our series um and we we were i think 15 or 14 set a new record we may even continue on this. It's such a, it's the heart of devotion. It's the heart of bhakti. All the different instances, flavors of Krishna as a performing actor on the stage. It's such a fascinating topic. I'm, I'm loath to let go of it. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens on Motivational Monday next week, whether we launch out to a new verse or whether we hang on to this one. But either way, it's all. It's all Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. It's all nectar. It's all sweet. So thanks very much. Have a good, great rest of your week and keep chanting. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama. Hare, Hare.